Abarigani. It's a key Swahili term, which means, what's the news? Well, the news today is the celebration of Kwanzaa 2020. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you to our sponsors, the Samuel L. Smith Educational Foundation, and the National Juneteenth Observance Foundation, Nevada. We are gathered this morning in the Kwanzaa home of West Las Vegas, in the West Las Vegas Arts Center. And we'd like to thank Dr. Marsha Robinson and her staff for providing us with the beautiful Kwanzaa table. Bria, a community educator. A community educator is someone who helps the community identify their needs, wants, and desires, and mobilizes resources to accomplish those dreams. With me is another community educator. As a matter of fact, my colleague this morning and I are former school principals in the Clark County School District. Please greet Sister Omiyale Jube. Greetings. What shall I say for Barigani? Thank you, Sister. As a matter of fact, in celebration of Kwanzaa, which begins on December 26, the really appropriate greeting for Kwanzaa as you meet your family and friends and community during the celebration of Kwanzaa week. When you meet someone, for example, on day two of Kwanzaa and say Habarigani to them, the appropriate response would be Kuchichakulia. The focus of Kwanzaa is on the principles of Kwanzaa. Therefore, everything we do on the particular day in the celebration of Kwanzaa centers on and focuses around the principles which Sister Jube will explain to us in, in depth a little later in our program. But this morning, we are going to start and say thank you to our drummers. And uh, they are going to be performing in the background later. We're going to introduce uh, our drummers to you. One of the first activities to begin the Kwanzaa celebration as created by Dr. Milana Karinga in 1966, is what we call the Arambe Salute. And Kwanzaa was developed during the 1960s out of the Civil Rights Movement by Dr. Karinga and his organization, US. And one of the initial ways that they began their program was, was by extending a clenched fist and lowering it and saying the word Arambe. So we will begin our program this morning with an Arambe salute. Ready? Begin. Arambe. 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 Thank you very much, and thanks to all of you who have joined us. And at this point in our program, as we begin our celebration, since we have started with our Arambe salute, is to call upon our elders. Kwanzaa is about our past, our ancestors, and those who have gone before us and recognizing them. So one of the most important aspects of beginning your Kwanzaa celebration is to call upon the elder of your group to give permission that we might proceed with our program. So today, I'm calling upon a very unique elder in the city of Las Vegas. She is none other than Sister Helen Tolan, and we call her the mother of West Las Vegas. Helen Tolan has been a fighter all of her life. She has rendered valuable service to the African American community, and not just to our community here in this city, in this state, in this nation, but she actually traveled to the motherland of Africa where she taught and shared her talents and her abilities with the brothers and sisters in Africa. We're happy to have her with us this morning. As a matter of fact, uh, just recently, we understand that the Clark County School District, where she was the first African-American woman employed by the district as a principal, has decided to name a school after her. So we're very happy to have our elder, Helen Tolan, in the audience with us this morning. Ms. Tolan, may we proceed? Happy Kwanzaa, everyone. My, even my mother, 
when she looked back on our history and what has happened to us, always welcomed the thought by one of our poets who said, go on and up. Our souls and eyes shall follow thy continuous rise. Our ears shall list thy story from bars who from thy roots shall spring and proudly tune their lyres to sing of Ethiopia's glory. Thank you. Please begin. Thank you very much, Ms. Tolan, for that inspiring response. Kwanzaa is a communicative activity. It is deeply rooted in traditions and African culture. One of the first activities that we are going to perform is called libation. And it is a, the Tambico ceremony. It goes back to a passage that can be found in the Book of Anai, which was written about 1250 BC. And it is just one of the African traditions that have been incorporated by Dr. Karinga into our celebration. And it is the celebration of the pouring of water where we take in the Kikambo uh, the, a cup of liquid. It can be water or juice. And um, in the past, this ceremony has had two basic principles. One, to pay recognition and call to join us our ancestors, those who have gone before us, number one. And number two, to say to our children that as we gather here today and pay recognition to ourselves and our effort, it is most important from the outset that we pay tribute and recognition to our ancestor or those who have gone before us. And so at this time, as we prepare uh, to pour the libation. Remember that it's done in remembrance and honor of the ancestors and a reaffirmation of our linkage with them and recommitment to the legacy in both, is, and this reconstruction is both instructive and informative for our children. And our children are one of the most important participants in our, our Kwanzaa celebration. So as we begin to pay tribute and recognition to our ancestors, like us, thus we are and thus we shall return, then we pour into the dust of the earth, libation. And this pouring nourishes our ancestors. And as we pour libations, we call forth our ancestors. I am Hotep. Harriet Tubman, Fannie Lou Hammer, Brianna Taylor, Booker T and W.E.B., Nzinga, Toure and Nat Turner, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, and Medgar Evers, Ida B. Wells and Billie Holiday, Rodney King and George Floyd, grandmothers, grandfathers, aunts, uncles, friends, neighbors, and teachers who taught us to love one another. Ashe and Sister Omiyale will be sharing with you a little of the history of the Kwanzaa. I'd like to introduce at this time my co-host and co-presenter today, Sister Omiyale Jube. She is a native of Harlem, New York, and our roots are deep. Because when I arrived in Las Vegas, Nevada over 30 years ago, I found one person promoting the concept of Kwanzaa in their home. And I actually took my wife and seven children and our family went to the home of Sister Jube to celebrate Kwanzaa. And I remember one particular comment that she made she would say to the gathering, you're always welcome. And she always was a welcoming host 
to the persons who came to her home to celebrate Kwanzaa. But she said to them, if you come to my house every year and celebrate Kwanzaa, then you are really not celebrating Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is a family celebration that ideally is conducted in your home. And over the 30 years that I've been in Las Vegas, I've had many great Kwanzas in my home, in Sister Jubei's home. I've had Kwanzas in the Indian Spring Prison. I actually had the unique experience of conducting the first Kwanzaa in the Moulin Rouge before it closed. So Kwanzaa is our celebration. It is us. And we cannot expect any individual organization or institution to do for us what we have to do for ourselves. We are at a time in our being as humans that we need to recapture our past, celebrate our present, and look to plan a positive future set in a principle of values. And that's what Kwanzaa is. So to give you the history of Kwanzaa now, I'm going to bring up Sister Jube. We lovingly call him Dr. G, Dr. Gloria. Thank you so much. So Kwanzaa, why Kwanzaa? Why do we need another holiday? What is it? What is, so, what is it all about? These are some of the questions I've been asked over the years. Why Kwanzaa? Some years ago, Dr. Milana Karenga traveled to the motherland, to the continent, to Africa. And he visited many, many different countries, keeping in mind that Africa is a continent with 54 countries. So he traveled around to see what the ancient traditions were. And as he explored, he found ancient traditions, customs. He found that many of the countries celebrated a harvest festival. So he took those traditions and brought them back to America and used them as a foundation for our very first Afro-African-American cultural celebration. It is a celebration of seven days based on ancient African traditions, customs, celebrations, and knowledge. Understand that Kwanzaa did not begin in Africa. It was not an African holiday. It was based for us here as an African-American people on these shores. Why? Because prior to Kwanzaa, in the inception of Kwanzaa in 1966, when he gave us this celebration, prior to that, we as a people did not have that connection to our ancient, rich African heritage. Every other people have a, cel uh, a celebration, a holiday, in which they celebrate their culture, they, they look back to their ancient heritage, their legacy, they find the country they're from, they celebrate their language, their attire, their, their music, all of the artifacts. We didn't have that. We were stripped of our rich cultural heritage.
first thing and very important is the mat. And it's all the way at the bottom. And the mat is the foundation. The canara is a candle holder. And it represents continental Africa. It represents our people. And it represents our roots. So we're talking about the gathering of fruits and vegetables, the first fruit or Kwanzaa, and they are called meseo, meseo, or crops. And these are the African harvests. And they represent the fruits and the productive labor of us as a community. The muhindi, or corn, the ear of corn, this ear of corn represents me. And every kernel in that ear represents my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. So I'm going to come back now to the, the seven candles. And they are called the Mishuma Saba. And they are part of a matrix and set of values which black people are urged to live by in order to rescue and reconstruct their lives in their own image. So let's talk about the Nguzu Saba. This is the basis, the foundation of the celebration. These are principles from ancient African traditions customs, values, upon which to live. These seven principles are what we need to look at, to embrace, to incorporate into our lives, not just for seven days, but for the rest of the year. These seven principles are going to restore us to our rich cultural heritage, restore us to the greatness that once was ours. So let's begin. On the first day, you light the first candle, the black candle. The words are in Swahili, so I'm going to say the word, the concept, the principle in Swahili first, and then in English. Umoja, unity. Unity, to bring our families, our communities, our nation and our race together. We have been separated in all kinds of ways. When we came to these shores, they separated the tribes. They separated us into groups. They separate us on the basis of color. They separate us in communities. Are you from the South? Are you from the North? We have to bring our family together in unity as one. Unity, Umoja. The second day, you light the candle to the right, and that is the red candle. Kuji Chakalia, self determination. I love saying that. Kuji Chakalia, to define ourselves for ourselves, to name ourselves, to be able to know who we are as a people and not be defined and named and spoken for by others. We decide what our celebrations are. We don't need anyone else to tell us you don't need another holiday. Yes, we decide we're going to celebrate Kwanzaa. We decide what African attire we wear. We decide what hairstyles we get to wear so that we can wear our natural hair in all of the creative styles. Kuji Chakalia, self-determination. On the next day, we light the green candle. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. To make our brothers and sisters problems our own and work together to solve them collectively. So what does that mean? Let's say you're, you're doing real well. You've become successful. You have that great job. You have that business. You 
you've moved up on the hill, better neighborhood, feeling real successful. But not until every brother and sister has been raised up can you actually say you've arrived. Because no matter how successful you may feel, as a people, when you step into that job as a manager and someone comes to you and asks you, are you lost? <laughs> I'm from New York, I always talk about the cab. All of your, your success and you step out on the curb and try to get a cab and the cab passes you by, then you will remember the importance of Ujima, collective work and responsibility. We have to rise together as a people, making our brothers and sisters problems our own. On the fourth day, we light the great candle. Ujima, collective economics. To have our own businesses in our communities and around the world, have our own black businesses and not only have black businesses, but support our black businesses. Because when other people come into our community and we support their businesses, that money goes out of the community. It's gone. It doesn't recirculate in our community helping to make our community rich and strong. Yes, take that extra time to drive a little bit further to find that black bottom, or a little further to find that black top so that we can recirculate our money and build a rich economic base as a people. Ujima, collective economics. On our fifth day, Nia purpose. What is our purpose? Our purpose must be to do all that we can do to restore our history and our culture. If you don't have a purpose in life, there, there's a saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. My mother used to say, if you don't know where you're going, you might wind up anywhere. We have a responsibility, each one of us, to have purpose in life. Have a plan. What is your plan for the day? What is your plan for the week? What is your plan for the year and for your future? As an individual, and what are you going to do in terms of purpose to restore us and our community and our rich cultural heritage? Nia, purpose. The sixth day, Kaumba, creativity. We must use our, creative, our creativity to make sure that we leave our communities more beautiful than when we inherited them. We are a creative people. We have melanin coursing through our bodies. Use that creativity. We've used creativity to get us through all the trials and tribulations of the past. We use our creativity to get us through the trials and tribulations that we still go through today. I say to you, use your creativity to begin your own Kwanzaa celebration. You don't have to have everything just perfect. You don't have a Kanara. Get seven black, red, black, and green candles and just set them up. Use individual candle holders. Begin somewhere. Kaumba, creativity. Begin your celebration and make it your own. And as, as time goes on, you will begin to build your table. Kaumba, creativity. And the last day, the seventh day, is Imani, faith. We must have faith in ourselves, faith in our family, faith in our parents, our teachers, the ones that are teaching truth, our leaders, the ones that are speaking for us and not to and about us. And most importantly, we must have faith in the righteousness of our struggle, in the victory of our struggle, 
that we will be returned to the greatness that once was ours. At the end of our celebration, at the end of each day, that is when we take the Umoja uh, Chak, I can't even say it. The Unity Cup, Kakumbe Cha Moja. I'm not going to pick this big cup up, but you take the Unity Cup to end the day. You gather around the table, and each person in the family passes the cup around and says something about Kwanzaa, something about our culture. And then we blow our candles out and we end our celebration for the day. I remember years ago, my son's all they know is Kwanzaa. They've been celebrating Kwanzaa since birth. And I remember my youngest son was three years old, and we gave him the, the Unity Cup, the Kakumba Chakumoja, and he said, I'm black and I'm proud. So again, take this celebration. Take this celebration. Make it your own. Bring it into your home. Embrace it. Asante Sala. Thank you very much. It's my